pre-calculus uh, 11, of course it's pre-calculus 20, and uh, we're looking at section 9.2, we're talking about quadratic inequalities with one variable only. So in 9.1, as I just uh, mentioned to you here, 9.1, we were looking at examples where there were two variables. So check this out, there's an x and there's a y. And the solution w was a number of points that had both x and y coordinates. So it represented a whole region of the coordinate plane. So again, two variables would represent a big region of space, okay, where, where you have x coordinates, y coordinates, there's solutions for x and y. In 9.2, it's a bit different. 9.2, we have one variable only. So I'm, I'm going to just uh, skip through. This is from your textbook there, and the roller coaster looks pretty fun. Uh, unless you're going to lose your lunch there, but uh, how many of you like roller coasters? Anybody like roller coasters? A lot? Okay. Mm, well, half of you. Okay, that's cool. All right, so let's take a look at this. Now, quadratic is the parabola, right? Quadratic is a parabola. In one variable, check this out, guys. Okay, focus, focus. No roller coaster talk now. Uh, check this out. We have an inequality right here with one variable only. Now this is super, super important. This is not like the last section where we were trying to find you know, a region of space with x and y values. There is no y. There's no y here. So that changes things a bit. And I'll show you how it changes things a bit. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find x values that cause this to be true. x values only. Okay. So we could, here's the graph of this, uh, x squared minus 3x minus 4. So the constant is your y-intercept, right? If we were to factor this, it looked like we would have uh, 4 and 1 would be our intercepts, 4 and negative 1. So there's, that's that. Okay, all right. Well, um, the x values that would cause, let's say, this statement to be true, okay? That is this uh, equation represented by x squared minus 3x, not an equation, x squared minus 3x minus 4, that expression, in order for that to be positive, what are the x values um, that would make that so? Well, let's just try some. Let's try like um, 5. Okay. So let's say we did 5 squared minus 3 times 5 minus 4. Is that going to be a value that's greater than or less than 0? Well, that's going to be 25 minus 15 minus 4. 25 minus 19, that's going to be 6. Well, that's greater than 0. Okay? That's greater than 0. So we could test x values to see if it makes the inequality true, this inequality true or this inequality true. Or what we could do is we could use the graph to determine this. Now watch this carefully. Okay? Notice how I plugged in x equals 5 here. You see that? That's x equals 5. I plugged in here and here. If this were a graph where this was y equals this, what you'd be able to do is you'd be able to plug in an x value and get a y value. Well, I thought, Mr. Maxwell, you said there was only one variable. There is. But we can use the graph, which has two variables, to determine which x values give us a positive answer or a negative answer. All right? So let me show you on the graph. Look at the x value that I chose number 5. x equals positive 5. Where is that on the graph? Well, it's right here. See that? Here's 5. You see that? Now, if I put 5 into a quadratic function or an equation, I would get 6 out of it. Now, we don't see it on this graph, but look at Do you see where the graph would, x equals 5 would be on the graph? It would be somewhere up here. And that would correspond to 2, 4, 6. Okay? So the corresponding function for this expression right here would give us some ideas of where the y, this function is positive and where it's negative. So I want you to see that anything greater than 4 here, any x value greater than 4 would yield us or give us a y value that's positive. Do you see that? So where x is greater than 4, this graph yields a positive answer, or this expression yields a positive answer. Okay, so I tried 5, that works. If I would have tried 6, 
I would get a positive answer. If I would have tried 100, I'd get a positive answer. If I tried 1,000, I would get a positive answer. So from the graph, you can see that x is greater than 4 gives us a positive value for the corresponding function. Now, where else does the graph have y values that are positive? Now, you might look over here and say, hey, these are positive y values as well. So guess what? the x values that are less than negative 1. So where x is less than negative 1, that gives us positive values. You see that? So this inequality right here, where is this expression greater than 0? Well, if you were to graph the corresponding uh, quadratic function, and look at where the graph is above the x-axis, that's where y is positive, all of those corresponding x values would be your solution. So let me put it another way. Let's talk about the other one then. Okay, let's erase all this, get rid of this, and even this. And let's take a look at this one now. Okay, this one. So where does this quadratic expression, like what values of x, uh, yields values that are negative or less than zero. Well, if I were to graph the corresponding function and show it on the graph like it is shown here, I would see that these are negative y values. Does everyone see that? This graph dips below the x-axis and gives us negative one value, negative two, negative three, four, five, six, and so on. So what x values yield those negative y values? Well, it's all of the x values from about here to about here. See that? Inside here. These x values are the solutions to this inequality. Because if I chose something like x equals 0, well, let's do it. 0 squared minus 3 times 0 minus 4 is what? That's 0 minus 0 minus 4. That's negative 4. You see that? So that's less than 0. Hey, right on. That fits. Because 0 gives us a negative value for y. Okay. Are you starting to kind of connect this? Hopefully. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, I'm going to skip that for now. I'm going to give you another just a, a example. Okay, so, watch this. This is 1, this is 5. So, and this is, um, no, let's, okay. Um, let's say this is y, uh, nope. Let's say this is uh, x plus minus 1 times x minus 5. Okay, that's what this is. And I'm looking for where this is greater than 0. Okay, so just, just a made-up parabola here. That was funny, wasn't it? Okay, a made-up parabola here, okay? Let's say this is the expression that would yield this corresponding function. So this that I've graphed here is actually y equals x minus 1 times x minus 5. Oh, negative, sorry, negative. It has to be negative because it's facing down. All right. So what are the x values that satisfy this? I can look at the graph and I can know what x values will make this positive. Where is the graph above the x-axis here? It's right here. You see that? That's the positive part of the parabola. Got it? because all of these y values are positive. So the x values that make this true right here, greater than 0, would be all the x values between 1 and 5. So those x values, be everything between 1 and 5, would make that positive. And you can test it out. You can try 2, you can try 3, you can try 4, you can try 4.89, whatever you want to do. It should always be positive. Now, how do we express this? Well, right here, this is greater than 0. So I need to have everything between 1 and 5, but not including 1 and not including 5, because that would make it 0. So there are different ways that you can show that. And, um, okay, so here is one of the ways I'm going to use this sort of example. Okay, so that's, uh, what is that, set, set notation? So x equals, and you can write it just like this. This is as simply as you need to write. You can write exactly like the textbook or like this. Um, 
x equals, or a solution set, actually this is the way normal, normally we do it, solution set here for x would be everything between 1 and 5, and you would say the x values would be greater than 1, while at the same time being less than 5. Okay? And then you could do x, e, r, whatever. There's a little variation, but this is the important part right here. So that's between 1 and 5. Every value between 1 and 5. Got it? Any questions? All right. So here's an example, and I'll just kind of maybe, um, I'll just maybe show you this here for the, for, for the next little bit here. Here's a a question here in one variable so it's an expression what values of x make this expression less than or equal to zero so zero or negative if you look at the corresponding graph if we were to graph it out there's the corresponding graph then you would say you know what x values make this negative well here are all the negatives right here that's the negatives of that graph so it's got to be these x values those x values give a negative value for that expression. And also, because it's or equal to, I have to include this value and this value. Those are included in the solution set. So you would say solution set of x values would be everything between, now what is this again? That's negative 1 and 3. So you'd say negative 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to positive 3. And you don't have to put the XER every time either. That's good. I'm good with this for an answer. Okay? So everything between negative 1 and 3 would cause this to be either 0 or negative. Okay? So that's inequalities in one variable. Really, we're just looking for X values. Notice there are no, like, regions. We're not shading a region. X, Y coordinates. We're not doing that. This is in one variable only. Okay, so we're just looking at values for x. If you want to say x is values anything greater than 2, you would write it like this. That's x greater than 2. If you wanted to say x less than 5, you would just write it like that. If you wanted to say x was less than or equal to 1, you would write it like that, and so on. Okay, so those are just examples here. Um, that should give you a good, uh, good idea. Of course, we could do test points. Um, but the, what I want you to do is kind of work from the graphs right now. This is working without the graph, and I'll let you take a moment to kind of read through this in your textbook. All right, so here are the key ideas. I will be uh, concluding this lesson tomorrow. Uh, so 9.2 part 1 uh, would include uh, number 1 and 2 from your textbook, and here they are right here, just number 1 and 2, and uh, we'll do part 2 of this lesson tomorrow.